strength. That is the measurement we just used to be using the refractor. You go up to 1.2, you take it across to your 60. I walk the lonely streets. So slightly I watch the people passing by. So there's different ways of measuring brewed coffee. There's not just one way, there's lots of different ways, then you use the chart to put them all on. I'll go through each one. So you've got a refractometer, it, leisure, it measures in a, a light refraction through the brewed sample. So basically, you put your room temperature coffee sample on the black area, you let it stabilise for a minute so the glass becomes the same temperature as the product. You press read and then it will give you a reading. I always say take three or four readings so it stabilises itself. The new one takes 30 readings and gives you an average. This one, just take individual readings, let it stabilise and that will give you your strength reading. It reads in bricks. If you're using a bricks reading, it converts it for you by XXX. What that XXX is, is a bricks, a bricks reading is eight, sorry, a TDS reading is 85% of a bricks reading. Yeah? So if it's one bricks, it's 0.85% strength TDS. Like most things in the world today, it's got iPhone software as well. The iPhone software is nice and portable, but I personally like using the graph. I like to see it on the graph. So, hydrometer. I've never used one of these personally because they're not very portable. It's a glass tube. One end is a weighted lead shot. The other end is a small closed tube containing a measuring scale. You cool it to 60C. The greater the amount of dissolved solids in the solution, the higher the amount will float, and the lesser amount, the lower will float. Basically, hovers and gives you a density reading of the product. Again, not very portable, it's a glass tube, not easy to move around. It's less accurate as well, I guess. Pardon? I'm guessing it's a bit less accurate as well. Probably because it's really <coughs> sensitive on temperature, so you have to have it exactly at 60 C. And when we used to use TDS meters, <coughs> it's very difficult to cool a larger sample to a stable temperature. You're talking about cooling, is it how many degrees? You see room temperature about 23. 20. Mm -hmm. Unless you're in some areas more. 15 minutes. Yeah. It's about 12 here. Yeah. Put the heater on it. Depends on the room. Next thing you'd like to know. Next thing you'd like to know. Okay, the dry, the dry method. You take a sample of brewed coffee, so your brewed coffee. <coughs> You filter out any undissolved solids, so if you're using a filtering method that allows any oils or undissolved solids on, you have to filter them out. You slowly dry at 105C, you actually take 10, 10, 10 mil samples. So you take 10 mil samples, you put it in an oven, cool it at 105C, you evaporate all of the liquid, weigh the remaining solids. The solids is a ratio of the sample will give you your strength really. You take 10 so you can get an average as well. If you only take one, there's obviously a margin of error. What's interesting is all of these devices again go on the graph. We all use the same graph. <coughs> TDS meter, which I think you guys use when you did your course. TDS meter. It's portable. It works by measuring the, conduct the ability to conduct electricity through the two prongs. Converts to a TDS using the same ratio of ionized solids, but you may, must make adjustments for the brewed the unbrewed water. What that means is, you calculate your gross beverage strength, so you take a, a brewed sample, you cool it to room temperature, about 23 degrees, you put in your TDS meter, you take a reading. It may say 1600, so that's 1600 parts per million. Then you need to take a sample of your water out of your machine, you cool that to room temperature, you pop it inside, take a reading, may that say 400. So you take 400 from 1600, we give you a net beverage strength of 1200, which is 1 1.2 on the graph. Not as accurate because obviously if your samples are slightly different temperatures, it will give you slightly different readings. It's about 30% less accurate than a refractometer. So a refractometer is obviously a lot better. So, if we have 60 grams a litre, one, don't look at your notes, only look at the screen because you've already got the printed version. So, 1.2% strength, how will the coffee taste if you look at that? 
This is allowing you to look at the graph and try and use the graph, if you can see it. Can <laughs> you see it close enough? Or not? So it's 60 grams of liter. So you're going to find your 60 grams of liter, which you probably all can't see. So 60 grams of liter here. Then we've got to find 1.2% strength. That is the measurement we've just used, maybe using a refractometer. Go up to 1.2, you take it across to your 60 grams of litre, so it's here. So it's slightly weak and underdeveloped. Weak and strong are obviously subjective, so we try and look at, is it underdeveloped, is it overdeveloped? Is, it, is that totally independent of contact time? I mean... Contact, it, right. there's lots of variables on it. Contact time would be one of them. Right. Yeah, grind size, contact time, temperature, turbulence. Oh, but the strength will... Uh, will go up as well if I would increase the contact time. Yes, it will. Oh, okay. Yeah, the longer you brew, the more you pull out. Oh, yeah, but yeah. if you brew too long, you pull less out. Right. Because the bed flattens. If the bed's flat, you'll under extract. So there's a certain tipping point when you have to stop. Right. So, what is the extraction? I don't know. So if you've got 1.2, 60 grams a litre, take it across to, one, to that, take it down. Just over 17% extraction. What's the window? 18 to 22. There you go. <laughs> What's the most? 30. <laughs> so there we go, 1.2 down, 17.5% oh, yeah. extraction. Just allowing you to visually look at it and work around and navigate it, because in a minute you'll be brewing and then putting it on a chart as well. <clears throat> You obviously measure acidity by using a pH meter. Um, you measure the, the water and you measure the brewed coffee. At least then if it's very acidic, it may actually be your water, not your coffee. There's no right or wrong, it just allows you to measure it. Temperature, um, we personally measure through the brew cycle, but what we say in the course is you measure 30 seconds in, halfway and 30 seconds before the end and take an average. What's the temperature for filter? <laughs> Depends on the coffee. What's the range? 92 to 96. There you go. It does depend on the coffee. Some people like go lower as well, to be fair. But the course is 92 to 96. So, brew analysis worksheet. What it allows you to do is just record data, that's all. So, it allows you to record all of the data from the name, coffee to water ratio, your brew times. You've got your total brew time, which is from when you press start to when it ends to a drip. You've got your water cycle time, which is from like the spray head to the stop of the spray head. And then you've got a drip time, which is when the spray head stops and it drips through the remaining coffee. Do, do you pause at the moment you see the drips coming? You, so, you, you hold when, when the drips are coming or uh, you wait until the drips... Wait till it dries out. Okay. Yeah, wait till it's, so it's obviously less messy, but... Yeah. Let it drip out and then take it away. You also measure the strength, so if you're using a refractometer, that will just give you your net beverage strength or your net coffee strength. Using the TDS meter, you've got your coffee, your water, and then your net beverage. Give your extraction rate by looking at the chart, and then you measure your acidity of the water and the coffee. So what we're going to do now is actually do something. Breaking groups of two, I think we may have enough brew methods, I think so. Pick up a brew method, there's Chemex, there's V60s, there's Aeropress and there's Siphon. 60 grams a litre, we've got coffee, grinder. <laughs> <laughs> so find out your grind size, we've got a water, we've got different pour pots. If you want to go in threes, go in threes, that's not a problem because I don't think we've got enough methods. But I want you to brew it, chart it, I'll give you charts. You've got to be in the box, so 18 to 22% extraction. When you're there, line them up and we'll taste them and see who's got the best coffee. Yep. From the same coffee. <laughs> yeah. So what we've got here, we've got a grinder and brewer, the MHG multi hopper grinder and the ICB infusion coffee brewer. What you'll find with Bond, we have loads and loads of digits for our brand names or machine names. But the grinder allows you to, to basically put as many coffees as you would like on a rack display and serve them through the ICB. And when I say that, that means inside here you have a data chip, so you would load inside here, if this is your Colombian, Kenyan, whichever, you would load the name in here so it knows that always the coffee in there is the Colombian, Kenyan, 
or any other tag which you load in there. When you program it in, you program your dose levels. So you've got three levels there. This brew will only do two, so you'll disable one of them and only have a full or half. When you take your funnel out, this also contains the data chip in the funnel. So when you pop it in the grinder, you press your volume, say it's a Kenyan or Colombian, you grind it, it'll grind a full brew if you press the full brew, transfer the data, so now it will say Kenyan full brew is inside this funnel. When you pop it in the machine, it will only brew to the Kenyan full brew settings that are inside of the machine. So if you've loaded a 3 minute and 20 second pulse brew for Kenyan and a 3 minute and <coughs> 1 second pulse brew for Colombian, it will brew them all wirelessly independently with a wireless interface. So then your staff don't have to worry about pressing the right button for the right coffee for the right volume. Yeah. When I say technology in the brewer, it's obviously a digital brewer, so it's accurate on temperature, but 93 degrees on the face, which will be about 92 out of the spray head. You get about one degree loss. Inside the funnel, when you're setting pulse brew, what that allows the machine to do is, is put the water on, take the water off, which is doing two things. One is it's extending contact time, but the other is the water's on and the bed's lifting. The, the water's off, the bed's sinking. So as it's going up and down the funnel, so water on, water off, water on, water off. It's kind of massaging the coffee, allowing it to create more turbulence and extract more out. But as we found then, four minute pulse brew was great, but we needed a slight bypass on to mallow the coffee out, so we had a 10% bypass. So 10% of 2.5 litres, 250 ml of the water went down there. So it went down the side, it didn't go down the coffee. It didn't go through the coffee, it went straight down the side. Yeah. So it allowed it to dilute and mallow out the coffee. And you can set that to 30 different coffees <coughs> if you want, and it will wirelessly interface 30 different coffees. So you grind it and brew it, and you don't have to worry about the settings. It's pretty flexible for, for a batch brewer. <laughs> <laughs> Pulse brew, easy yes. pulse, yes. Brew time is 5.30. It'll only go so high, we'll see how high it will go. <laughs> Last time it went 5.30, right? Like yeah, it depends on the bypass, see, it kicked out, man. So that's our plan. 5.07 is your 5.07 is fine. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> okay, it's set up. We'll go in and out the programming and it's ready to go. Okay. Uh, so you've got your thermos, your coffee. You had a taste? I just mentioned about the hot water boiler, guys. I think we're going to see you. Hidden, Sorry, guys. Hanks just said, just mention the hot water system. The hot water system, if you notice, it says 200 here, some, some Fahrenheit, you can change that to Celsius. It, the nice thing with it is it's an atmospheric boiler, and what, what I mean by that, it's not a pressure vessel, it's it vents, but it's, it actually will allow you to go up to 100 degrees because it measures the steam output. So it's an atmospheric boiler at 100 degrees. Surprisingly, it does 80 litres of water an hour. You wouldn't think it because it's so small, but it does 40 litres immediate draw off and 80 litres an hour. You fill your bath with that. 40 litres immediate draw off. 40 litres immediate draw off. Just the way it fills and the amount of power going in, it allows it to recuperate. How big is the boiling tank? It's the full size of the tank. I don't know the exact capacity. It's probably, if I had to guess, it probably be about nine and a half litres. So that's it. there's not really a lot more to say. It's fully adjustable on the face as well. Obviously, going up temperature is easy. If you want to go down temperature, you've got to draw it off. It's a little bit harder. It's all thin chili. You lose two minutes. <laughs> <laughs>